Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Linus Kiramat, one of the Kenya Agile Programs Human Trainers. This video we're going to look at a topic in sentence correction that has proved to be problematic to most students. Uh, there is usually a confusion that arises between these terms, these two terms. In today's video, we're going to allay, we're going to uh, clarify meaning and uses of these two words. The two words uh, we're going to focus on are lie and lay. So let's begin. Lie uh, is a transitive verb, that is, an action that one does to oneself and never to an external object. For example, uh, you'd say his strengths lie in martial arts, his strengths lie in martial arts, or the men lie in bed. So basically, these words never take a direct object. They would uh, be referring to the subject, uh, the actions of the subject that they do to themselves, all right? So have that clear in your mind. Then compare that with the meaning of lay, uh, which is a transitive verb. That is an action that one does to an external object. It always takes a direct object. For example, you put down something, uh, you're referring to that action as lay uh, down, down a pen, lay down a book, all right? Or to set in a position, lay uh, the books in order, lay uh, the, the children in line, right? So, for example, I lay a box on the desk. I lay a box on the desk. Or you could have the student lay the pencil on the table. Or, yeah, the student lay the pencil down. Okay. So, for the present tense of lay, uh, you have lay, as we have talked about. Then, past tense, you'd say he laid down uh, the pencil. Uh, on the table, right? The past perfect, you'd say he had laid down the pen on the table or the pencil on the table. His for lie, his strengths lie in martial arts. His his strengths lay in martial arts, or his in past uh, perfect, you'd say his strengths had lain in martial arts. Okay, so I hope till that it's clear. Okay, so you're free to pause the video and uh, try out this example after which you can play and you can uh, follow the how I'm going to explain it. You are watching Success with Bob Moiti Show presented to you by Upstech America. Upstech America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.upstakeamerica.com Upstake America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential. So, the example says, anarchists believe that the idea that the ideal society is one in which the motivation to uh, maintain law and order lies in the innate reasonableness of uh, human nature rather than the threat of force. Anarchists believe that the ideal society is one in which the motivation to maintain law and order lies in the innate reasonableness of human nature other than in the threat of force. Right? So uh, this is an example of a uh, lie taking the indirect object. Okay? Remember, every time lies uh, takes the indirect object. And so for this case, we, be, we are looking out for... Uh, Singularity of lie, whether it's singular or plural, okay? And again, we can tell this we have used a conjunction here. So anytime you spot a conjunction, make sure that uh, parallelism is observed in the sentence, okay? So uh, starting out with uh, the initial uh, sentence, anarchists believe that the ideal society is the one in which the motivation to maintain law and order lies in the innate reasonableness of human nature rather than the threat of force. Okay, uh, as it's constructed, I can't really tell any errors in it. Uh, it appears uh, that it is actually correct because uh, you can't really spot errors in uh, in this underlined section, right? So A is candidate is a strong candidate for it being our, our answer. Let us look at B. Law and order lie in the nature resemblance of human nature rather than in the threat of force. Uh, again. Uh, for a case, we are talking about motivation. 
and the motivation here is in singular form that's why we are going with lies instead of lie which is plural so for that reason uh, eliminate uh, b c says lies in the innate uh, reasonableness of human nature than the threat of force again uh, we are talking about something that takes the indirect object uh, an intransitive verb and so the proper words to use for this is lie not lay okay so any answer choice that has lay or lays in it is obviously wrong then e lies in the innate reasonableness of human nature instead of the threat of force so again uh, you can see some glaring mistakes here of course they have changed uh, the conjunction here they are using instead of instead of uh, in gmat uh, most of the time uh, rather than would uh, be more preferable than instead of instead of would be used to compare items like um, nouns or yeah they are com comparing nouns okay so but most of the time rather than would be more preferable than instead of so for this case we have rather than and that uh, is what we're, go we're going to uh, go with furthermore uh, this is an aspect of uh, parallelism here that is not being followed like um, lies in the innate reasonable of human nature instead of the uh, threat of force uh, for it to be correct it could be uh, it could be could have been constructed as instead of in the threat of force rather than uh, instead of the uh, threat of force so for that reason is out uh, answer is a which is lies in the net reasonableness of human nature rather than the threat of force okay let's try another example example two Darwin was not the first to advance a theory of evolution. His tremendous originality lay in the fact that he proposed the idea of natural selection as a means by which evolution worked. Darwin was not the first to advance a theory of evolution. His tremendous originality, originality lay in the fact that he proposed the idea of natural selection as a means by which evolution worked. So we can tell the use of uh, that we are using lay here. Uh, because this is a transitive verb it takes a direct object because originality as we are being told lie, lay in the fact that it proposed the idea so originality lay in the fact okay so that uh, it, it takes a transitive verb so um, we have to look, scan through our answer choices and see if uh, look out for the correct answer choice already from this center in part you can tell some uh, wordiness too much too many words used to describe the same thing for example lay in the fact that he proposed the idea lay in the fact that he proposed the idea i believe there are easier ways or better ways of using fewer words to explain uh, what all these words uh, could be meaning okay so a uh, it's a bit wordy and uh, so takes the form of the underlying underlying part b Lay in the fact of his proposal, of his proposing the idea. Um, fact of his proposing idea is ungrammatical, and that cancels out. See, laid in the fact of his proposing the idea, laid in the past tense, uh, past perfect tense, uh, past tense, I guess. Yes. So laid. Uh, in this case, we are talking about something uh, that happened in continuity. So lay will be perfect for that, not laid. So laid in the fact of his proposing again grammatical uh, false you don't say in the fact of his proposing that's wrong sees out d laid in his proposal again past tense uh, out so lay in his proposal yes this is uh, the better option of the five uh, few words are used here but we still have correct meaning we still know what uh, you're still able to tell what is being communicated so for that reason uh, e is a correct answer. So Darwin was not the first to advance a theory of evolution. His tremendous originality lay in his proposal of natural selection as the means by which evolution worked. We've come to the end of this video. And join us in our GMAT training sessions. We will elaborate this and other topics in the uh, verbal section of the GMAT exam. Thank you.